and uh, let me get that set up properly. And so it looks like we're ready to roll. Okay, one, uh, welcome to the call. Uh, this is Herbert Harris, and uh, I am in uh, Jackson, Mississippi today, sharing our business and uh, vision with just a great group of people. We had a magnificent party last night. The holiday spirit and season was in the air, and it just motivates you to uh, say, man, what a great business that we can actually share and be with people and, and friends and, and, and get paid for doing it. And so uh, it really inspired me, and as I was coming out on the plane, you know, every morning on Saturday, <clears throat> if you notice, I don't. I, I don't post our topics until probably a day or two before. And the reason is I don't know what I'm going to speak on. And um, what I actually end up doing is choosing to um, pick a topic that really impacts me. In other words, whenever I share a topic with us, uh, with, with our group here, it's generally something that's going on in my life. And what we find is that we're all connected. And uh, those of us in business, those of us who are friends and acquaintances, but if you look back over your life, you'll find that we're all connected. And for some reason, some of the challenges facing um, one of us are some of the same challenges facing all of us. And so this morning, uh, the challenge and the, and the topic for today is leadership, effective leadership. And I chose that topic because many of us, we're at the end of the year, and we're sort of at a crossroads. We, we, we look back over the last year, and we say, man, that was a good year. Uh, but we also have to really, I guess, uh, look at where we're going to go next year. One second, I, I did not put the recording on. Okay, a little technical stuff. But anyway, you know, as we start looking at where we are right now and where we want to go, the, it occurred to me, and I think many of you on the phone will share this, that uh, many of us are stuck. <laughs> and when I say stuck, we have gotten to a point in our lives and our businesses where we're not moving forward at the, at the rate that we really thought we would be at, and definitely, definitely, not at the rate that we want to be moving. And as I really began to look at that challenge, it's, it's like, you know, being in a hole, you, you know, sometimes we have this saying that we dig ourselves into a hole. Well, you know, when you're digging a hole, when you're in a hole, how do you get out of the hole? And, and, and one of the first things you do is uh, stop digging, <laughs> you know. And, and that's saying that whatever you're doing that has gotten you in the hole, don't try to defend it. Don't try to excuse it. Just stop doing it. And it is in that process of stopping that something happens. And one of the things we find is that whenever you're in a challenge, in a, in a, in a situation where you can't seem to get out or where you've been stuck for a while, that's when leadership appears. In other words, the, the prerequisite for leadership to appear is often pain is often disappointment. And it's interesting that we often have to come to that point of being in a hole, of being stuck, to force that introspection. You know, I often tell my story of being, uh, having been in 18 companies and 15 of them I lost money and made friends. And one might not be excited about that, but if you think about it, your victories uh, you don't learn that much from victories. When, you, when, you, when things go the way you want them to, you sort of take the credit and move on. But when you have challenges, when you're in a hole, when stuff doesn't work, it really makes you, one, introspective, and two, it, makes you, it puts you in a seeking uh, frame of reference, like how do I get out of this hole? How do I get myself unstuck from where I'm at? And so as I began to think about this, it's really, uh, you know, in the lumber days, in the, in the, uh, when they would cut lumber, uh, in the woods, and to get the lumber from the forest to the uh, lumber mill, 
they would put the lumber in the river. In Wilmington, that was a very common way to get timber down to the harbor. And uh, as the lumber, as the big logs flowed down the river, there would come a time, there would come a time at points where the, the, a log jam would occur. And when that log jam occurred, once it locked up that, that passageway, then everything stopped. All the logs coming down the river stopped, and the jam just grew bigger and bigger and bigger. And that is really as it is in our life, and especially in our business, that many of us are at a log jam. We, we, we're at a point where whatever we've been doing is not flowing where we want it to go. And so how do you get out of the jam? That's really it. How do we free ourselves to move on to our higher good? And one of the things that's interesting, you look at when you get a jam, you'll find you learn a lot about people. You know, you have you have different groups of people. You have a, one group, I call them the, the, the watchers. And, and these are people who see the log jam, who will see your situation, who will look at uh, sometimes in some areas we'll see meetings that were once large have gotten small. And they'll look at it and, and they'll say, wow, it's a log jam. <laughs> They don't do anything to help it, and generally they'll make excuses. You know, well, this log jam is here because the company didn't do what it was supposed to do. Uh, this log jam is here because all the people I meet are intent on staying broke. Uh, this log jam is here because, oh, the people in southeastern uh, North Carolina, they don't want to be successful. And then you have a group called the Wanderers. And we see it. These are people who look at the log jam, who look at their own situation. And they wonder how they got there. And, and the wonders have a tendency to uh, blame others. I mean, uh, whatever, whatever the situation is, it's always somebody else's fault. And we even have the wanderers. And, and these are people who often, they, they didn't get into your business, but they always are around the periphery you may invite them to an event and they'll show up every now and then and but when they see you stuck they 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 it, it really actually gives them negative motivation to move on to something else and do nothing but the people i want us to focus on and the people that we have to become are the people who are the actors the people who are the leaders the people who actually undertake to unstick everybody to unstick the to break up that log jam so that the log so that everything is flowing flowing freely and so those of us in business now those of us in life now we actually we have to become our own leaders in other words we have to be led out of darkness if you think about it you know just on a biblical side when uh, Moses had to lead people out of Egypt there's always somebody, a leader, who, who, who takes uh, you and everybody from where you are to where you want to be. And these leaders often, they always emerge when the challenge appears. So now we face a challenge, and we want to move on. couple points. Effective leadership, number one, is to recognize the difference between leadership and management. And, you know... In our business, we often, when we have a, a bit of success, there's a tendency to become managers, you know, to really perpetuate the organization uh, yeah, by, uh, you know, doing little things, you know. We, we promote stability. We want to keep status quo. We want to keep everything the way it is. But, you know, that's almost a violation of the law of life. The law of life is change. And if you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to keep getting what you've always gotten. And it, it, it sort of runs out of gas. So when you're in a jam, when you're in a, a challenge, management will not get you out of it. You cannot manage your way out of being stuck. You cannot manage your way out of the challenge. I mean, you can design all the forms. You can have all the trainings. You can, I mean, you can do everything a good manager does to create stability, to hold the organization together, but it will not get you unstuck. And this is where leaders come about. Leaders are people who see the vision. Leaders are, are people who, who see where we are going rather than where we are. And so on a personal level, it does not mean that every one of us has to step up and take the helm. 
but it does mean that everyone of us, us must understand the need for leadership. You know, the, the, every leader needs good followers. And so when you're stuck, sometimes you, 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 you one, you realize you got to stop digging yourself, but two, you also say, you know, I got, I got to figure out how to get out of this. And, and that is really where the leadership comes in. The leaders begin to focus on the mission, on the vision, on the values. And so when we're stuck, when one is stuck in a situation in their business or in their life, a leader emerges, and this is <clears throat> a person who sees beyond that log jam, who sees beyond the challenges, and who sees the way things can be. You know, I, I think it was uh, John Kennedy who said that, uh, you know, there, there are people who see things as they are and, and, and I guess wonder why, but there are others who see things as they can be and say, why not? So now, if we are in a situation, effective leadership means to think like a leader, to be the first one, no, 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 to be the first one that realizes that there's a problem. In other words, the leader must see the long log jam really before it occurs. He must know why it's going to happen. And so for us now who are, who are in, in a situation of, uh, of a log jam in business or in life, that leadership part of us begins to come out and say, now, let us not focus on the log jam, but let us focus on that great, that river, that, that area that we want to get to. Let us focus on the vision. Let us focus on the mission. So once we begin to do that, then we'll find ourselves lifting up out of this hole. We'll find ourselves unsticking ourselves from the log jam of whatever nature it may be. How do we do that? And we keep, we always are in our business, we always talk about the why. That why is where you develop the passion. You know, it, it, it's very interesting. Sometimes people say, what's the difference between a goal and, and a vision? Well, you know, a goal is, you know, something that you want to accomplish. It's specific, it's written. But a vision is something that you want to realize. A vision is something that you feel. And so as we begin to work on getting ourselves unstuck, one, realize that it's going to take a team. It's not just our own efforts. But somebody has to step up to lay out the plan, to lay out the vision, to give a step-by-step -step plan for, for everyone to move out of that, that situation. So as a leader, you want to, one, pick good players. So when we look at our organizations and we, we see where we are and we are committed to following the vision and not only committed but passionate about it. See, the difference between a goal and vision is passion. You may desire to achieve a goal which you must have passion to realize your vision because a vision is a series of goals over a longer period of time and a, and a vision requires that emotional energy, that emotional power that makes things happen. So you want to pick good players. So look at your organization, look at the people around you and recognize those who have goals and visions of their own who really need a vision, who need a leader, who need a track to run on. You know, when people come to our business with a dream, they expect us to give them a vehicle to go to get to, to realize that dream. So we want to pick good players. You know, look at the people in our organization who've demonstrated that they want it. Sometimes they may be frustrated. They they may, but now when you step up as a leader, you motivate them because people are hungry for leadership. The 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 children of Israel could not lead themselves out of the darkness out of Egypt, a leader had to appear. And so in our business, we must become that leader. Okay. Number two, we must direct the traffic flow. To get out of the hole requires action, but it requires coordinated, visionary, passionate action. I'll say that again. To get out of the hole, to get out of that, un that stuck situation requires coordinated, passionate, visionary action. And so as a leader, really begin to see beyond what is to what can be, but see it and feel it with such passion 
that it becomes infectious. You know, we, we say uh, enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is an infectious state of mind that gets for you the cooperation of other people. So if there's one thing you want to do to take yourself out of the log jam of business and of life is to become enthusiastic about where you're going because your enthusiasm radiates and that's just what your followers need. They need the passion. They need the energy. If we're in a hole, it's because most of us as leaders have, have, have fallen into the management mode and management does not require passion. It only requires organization. But it, it also creates that stuck situation. So to be a leader, to have that vision, and to really, really see that vision with such passion that now you can impart that passion to your people. It is important that, uh, that a leader provides what I like to call passionate motivation. A leader must perceive that the relationship between the leader and people is this. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And so an ego-centered leader is not going to be very, very effective. And, you know, when you have the challenges that come about in the business and you find that you're stuck and the leaders who step up who are ego-centered can't get you out of that hole. And you'll, you'll see that in our business and in our, in our lives, that there are people who want to lead sometimes because of position. You know, because you're a, a diamond or a double diamond or a triple or whatever level you may have in your company does not necessarily mean that you're a leader. You may have been a beneficiary of some good leaders under you. And so one of the keys is to take that ego out of the, out of the equation so that you can then really see the situation as it is rather than from that, that, that perspective of I want, I am, I am the one, that ego perspective. And so... That leader, the one, that part of us that will get us from being stuck is that we must inspire our team by making them know how much we care. Once people feel that, then that emotional connection can be made. And then the next step as a leader is to now have a plan, a vision, a step-by-step -step way to move where you want to go, to do what you have to do. And if you notice... In our business, for example, you know, they say, well, who decided to have meetings every Tuesday night or every meetings every Thursday night or who decided to have super Saturdays? The leaders. And so leaders create that foundation, that framework for others to follow. If nobody created super Saturdays, guaranteed, if the leaders didn't do it, there would be no super Saturdays. Okay? If the leaders didn't lay out the, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the trainings, there would be no trainings. And so... When we're stuck, we have to realize that many of us as leaders have to step up again, have to reassert our leadership and our understanding and our emotional connection with our team. Because once we do that, then we can get the spiritual power of connectedness. In other words, two or more gathered on one accord, I am among them. And I am is that making power that gives people the power to, to get out of that hole, gives them the collective power to, to remove the logs from the log jam. So let's sum it up now. To be an effective leader, one, you have to think like a leader, you know, to see that log jam. And, and let me tell you something. As we become better leaders, we'll eliminate the log jams because we'll know how they come about, you see. Like, like I say, managers will never see the log jam coming. <laughs> You have to have leaders who see beyond the next run and turn and, 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 you know, having lived in an area where you do have log jams, you'll find that log jams generally come about when there's a curve in the river, okay? Log jams come about when there's a constriction in the river. Leaders begin to see that the log jam doesn't happen overnight. So in our business, whatever that stuck situation we may have, it didn't happen overnight. But as leaders with experience, you see when that one log sort of clings to the side and that second log sticks to it, the others are still going around within a short period of time, a third log. The leader now sees that vision. And so when that first log carries on the side, he sends someone to move it. Or as we say, a good leader has laid out the plan and say, we know this happened. We know we get the bends in the road where these logs get stuck. And so let me have one of our team members there 
at these particular areas that we know they are, so that when that first log sticks, he can push it off. When that first person comes into a meeting and, and, and perpetrates negativity, somebody can step him aside and say, no, that, this doesn't work here. The leader, when you act like a leader, you have the ability to, to, to lay out that vision. Two, you must feel like a leader. You know, your feeling is what is radiated to other people. And if you don't feel that leadership, if you don't feel that you have the authority, you have the courage, you have the commitment to get it done, people see through it. They, I mean, they can feel it, and they will not follow you. So when you feel like a leader and you act with passion, then you can, three, provide a clear sensory vision of where we need to go because it is your clear sensory vision that will ignite and motivate your followers. And whenever we lose connection with our followers, it's not the followers' fault. It's generally the leader's fault. Is that we've become too much of a manager, or that we've become too en enthralled with ourselves. You know, we get egocentric. And so, once we provide that clear sensory vision that can motivate us, that can stimulate our followers, we'll truly be able to get uh, out of the hole and get unstuck. And then finally, as a leader, we really have to focus on the hearts. You know, this is not a hard business, but this is a heart business. People make decisions emotionally. People will die for leaders because of an emotional attachment, not because of a written plan. And so as leaders, we have to recognize that, focus on the passion within, and share that passion with others through enthusiasm, through posturing, through how we handle stuff. When people see how we handle the crisis, you know, there's some people that will walk in and they'll say, well, how much does it cost? And that can change the whole tenor of a meeting. But then when a leader walks in and he says, well, how much can I make? Okay, then that changes everybody's frame of reference. So at this point in our businesses and in our lives, we have the ability to act like a leader. We have the requirement to feel like a leader. We must develop the capacity to lay out that clear century vision of where we want to go. And then finally, we must recognize that this is a heart business and that when we can convince and when people know how much we care, they'll follow us to the ends of the earth and the best will surely come. All right, let me open the lines for any questions. All right, uh, any uh, victories, thoughts, feedback, questions? Yes, yes, I can. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other questions, feedback, or comments? <laughs> Thank you so much, CJ. I appreciate you. Yes.
Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Fred and Becky, and I sure appreciate your hospitality. I have, I am having a ball here. Okay. Uh, any other, someone was talking in the back. If you can hear it, we can hear it. Any other comments before we sign off? Yes. 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 Excellent. Yes, you have you have you have exceeded, and we have watched you grow so magnificently. Wow! Wow! You know. Thank you so much. As you're saying that, I could feel a real chill, just a, 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 a spiritual energy. I don't know if any of you others could feel it, but I could really feel that come over my entire body. We sure thank you. We sure appreciate you. And we know that you're going to rise on to your higher good. All right. We're, thank you. Any one more comment before we wrap up? I got to, we got to move on to, uh, it's almost showtime here in Mississippi. Any victories anyone would like to share quickly before we sign off? I love to acknowledge victories. Okay. No victories this week. Well, that means you're going to have double victories next week. All right, folks. Have a great, magnificent day. Be the leader that you need to change, to make the changes that must be made to create the life that you want to live. And it is done. The best is yet to come. Bye-bye.